And Stan Lee is a bit of a dis divisive figure. I suspect I probably have a bit more of a fondness for the work that Stan Lee as a scripter is doing here than you do. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't very much of a You weren't feeling writing. it? You didn't yeah. think it was funny or... No, not really. It was just kind of cheesy and... Mm -hmm. eh. Yeah, I mean, I, he he did like put in some kind of flowery verbiage and stuff like that to try. I feel like try to get up to Kirby's level a little bit and stuff yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And some of the things he said was actually kind of neat. You know what I mean? Like some of his wording, but I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's just too much. You know, Stanley's a divisive figure for a lot of reasons, and there's mm -hmm. a lot of people who are a fan of Jack Kirby and Jack Kirby's work on these Marvel comics who who have no use for Stanley. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you can put aside the script, or if you can put aside the script you can enjoy these as just wonderfully cartooned stories because, you know, Kirby basically conceived these plots, mm -hmm. right, and drew them all out, maybe based on a one or two sentences, you know, idea from Stan Lee, if that, and then Stan Lee would go back over and script them. So if you'd like, you can kind of ignore the script and just enjoy what Kirby and Sinod are doing here, and you'd get a, a somewhat fulfilling experience mm -hmm. uh, if you're so inclined. I happen to like Stan Lee. I, I think you, you have to say that Stan Lee is a very good editor in that he recognized that, you know, artists like Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko were capable of, of uh, crafting these stories if they were left to do their own stories, essentially. Just kind of let them go. You know what I mean? And, you know, there's there's something to be said for that kind of hands-off editorial style. In a, in a weird way, I think Stanley is to be admired for the freedom that he gave these creators. Whether or not he should have given them more credit for doing it is an entirely different discussion outside the scope of this episode. But just, like, critically speaking, I think he needs to be given props as an editor. And I do enjoy his dialogue. I find it fun to read. I think you're right. Uh, he's kind of trying to come up to Kirby's level. I feel like Kirby's kind of upping his game here. I feel like Lee is kind of trying to up his game too. You know, Kirby's presenting these grand, you know, full page images of Galactus and Black Bolt and these cities and it's so regal and wonderful that Lee's really got to pour on this kind of Shakespearean purple prose that he does so mm -hmm. well um, and really kind of, you know, come up to Jack's level. I feel like they're really feeding off of each other, or at least Lee is feeding off of Kirby. Kirby probably wasn't getting so much out of Lee. <laughs> I don't think Kirby actually ever looked at the printed comics after mm -hmm. they left his desk. He was on to the next thing. Um, but for me, it's a wonderful collaboration. It's one of the, you know, most great comics I feel like are created by a single person. You know, Charles Schultz Peanuts, Carl Barks Donald Duck, you know, um, the Hernandez brothers, they each have their separate you know, universes of characters that they are the primary authors of. Uh, this is one of the cases in comics where it's truly a collaboration and it's really wonderful. I don't think um, it would have been as successful if any one of them, including Joe Sina, but especially Lee or Kirby, I don't think could have done this. We know Lee couldn't have. But even Kirby on his own, if you look at the fourth world, um, it's not... It's, it's more pure Kirby, but it's not quite... I mean, I would say it's not quite as good as the Fantastic Four. You know, I mean, I would say that. Um, there's just something really wonderful going on in the collaboration of Lee and Kirby. And another thing that's great about Lee, too, is he, he has a sense of humor. He doesn't... Um, he takes it seriously, but he doesn't let you take it too seriously. He doesn't let the characters take themselves too seriously. There's always a lot of winking at the camera and stuff that I enjoy. It is a hokey, <laughs> cheesy sense of humor that's not mm -hmm. to everyone's taste. And they are densely written comics. I mean, yes. it takes you a while to get through 20 pages, especially on Thor. Um, and that's where Stanley's dialogue really is wild. Um, but I, for, firstly, I, I like that. I mean, I feel like you get a good meaty experience yeah. um, in this 20-page comic that you used to be able to buy for like a, a dime or something, or however much it was back then. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I think it's just a, a wonderful reading experience. Yeah, I will say the character of Invisible Woman is pretty annoying in this. She's... <laughs> I mean, they the male characters are calling her woman all the time and yeah she's like all just it's, like just like you know doing her hair and stuff like that while there's and like getting them into trouble and stuff like that it's just like yeah i don't know it's just like she's 
I don't know. It's it's the times, you, I guess. Well, I but... mean, you do have to. Yeah, I mean, that's. A, I would say that is admittedly probably a weak point. The portrayal mm. of the Invisible Woman in these comics, they they treat her pretty badly. Yeah, and I feel like Mister Fantastic always treated her uh, worse after they were married. Like they were just married in these issues. Okay. The previous one was the big annual where they got married. Um, and I feel like after they got married, it was all like, shut up, Sue, or quiet, don't you understand, woman, I'm trying to save the universe, and, oh, Reed, why don't you just spend time with me? It's a, yeah. it's a little, that does get a little cringeworthy, I'll, yeah. I'll grant you that. Some of that you can say, well, that was the times, you have to read in context, and some of that you just have to say, you know, I really wish you guys had done a better job with that. And it's something that obviously has been rectified with that character by other creators mm-hmm. in years. Um, following particularly John Byrne's run uh, with the character in the 1980s where she went from being the Invisible Girl finally to becoming the Invisible Woman. Uh, He did a lot of cool things with her, but that was, you know, that was a long time coming. We wish that Lee and Kirby could have been a little bit more progressive. So I'll grant you that the Invisible Woman's portrayal uh, can be a little cringeworthy. I do like the character here, though. I do like the Invisible Woman. And you've got to keep in mind, too, like, she's one of the Fantastic Four. She's Mm -hmm. got, you know, she's not just a damsel in distress. She has superpowers. She's a member of the team. She's out there with the boys when they allow her to be. Um, But it seems like the entire time they're telling her what to do. It's like she can't think for herself to put up a shield. Yeah, Yeah, it's... You know what I mean? It's like... Granted. It's like... Three and a half, a little bit, not fantasy yep. four. <laughs> I'll grant, I'll grant you that point. It's, it's the, it's, it's unfortunate that the sexist portrayal of the Invisible Woman, uh, you know, mars these otherwise terrific issues. I mean, for me, you know, I can read it in the context of the time. It even has a certain, a certain charm. But I do think it's a valid criticism. Um, so I, I'll grant you the cringeworthy portrayal of the invisible girl in um, these issues. But otherwise, they're just terrific, uh, action-packed superhero entertainment. Mm-hmm. And Kirby's, and the, you know, Kirby's entering the next kind of stage in his artwork here. You know, he's the 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 kind of art style that you think of when you think of Jack Kirby is is really just starting to be developed in in this period here and on the work on Thor that we'll be discussing. The architecture, the complex machinery, the wonderful photo collages that mm-hmm. he used to do on occasion, which I just absolutely love those. Um, yeah, so like in the um, in this it looked really nice, but in the actual essential volume, which you read the Thors of, it's kind of dark and kind of murky. Sure, yeah. It looks better printed in, in, yeah. in color. It probably looks better in this than it looked like when it was originally printed. Probably. So, anyway. So, uh, Fantastic Four is fantastic. Yeah. I liked it a lot, too. Um, Inhumans, I love the Inhumans. Um, Medusa, I like the relationship with Crystal and Johnny. Oh, I yeah. That's great. There's so much going on here, yeah. Yeah, there is a lot so going on. So there's the epic love story between the Human Torch and, and Black Crystal, Pulse is the great. Inhumans. And, and I mean, a lot of this stuff terrific. like is developed later with the Terragon Mists, and there are even some contradictions and some things that are going on with the Inhumans actually being part of the Kree later on, and here they're pretty much humans that evolve separately. So yeah. there's some contradictions that they can backpedal a little well, bit Well, but I mean, but. that's the thing. Like, I feel like Lee and Kirby, they introduced all these just terrific concepts. Yeah. And basically, over like a 10-year period, and then since then, all the creators at Marvel have basically just been refining and tweaking these concepts. Um, there's really been nothing like the kind of creative explosion that happened uh, at Marvel in the 1960s. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's a little rough. There might be some contradictions, but look at what these guys gave to comics. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like we're still reading stories about, you know, Galactus and the Inhumans and uh, Black Panther. These were all concepts that were introduced like one after another by basically like one guy, Jack Kirby. You know, I mean, it's just like the, the creative uh, energy and imagination is just staggering to me when you really look at um, what Kirby accomplished here, especially when you consider this is just a fraction of his career. I mean, he was already a, a superstar creator before they even got to the Marvel stuff. So, mm-hmm. so anyway. 